somebody, it's time to give God a praise. <laughs> found on God's word through Bible study. Um, I would like to thank Pastor Belser for this opportunity, and I just hope that this message reaches whoever needs to hear it. Um, please bow your heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we humbly come before you to say thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for keeping us, Father God. Thank you for leading and directing our path. We pray that this word reaches whoever needs to hear it on today, Father, and that you speak through me and for me, Father, that your Holy Spirit moves in your people and those that need to know you like we know you will draw near to you. We thank you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. So, uh, today, I would like to talk to you guys about the topic of prepare for takeoff. Now, a lot of times we hear the phrase that we are living in the last days. And when you really pay attention to everything that's going on around you, you know that that's true. Um, a lot of times we hear those words and sometimes we can clench up and we get scared or we might take it in a negative context but those of us that are believers when we hear that we should really rejoice even though we may not know how long we have left on this earth we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the lord and that are called according to his purpose so we as believers we should rejoice in that and the passage of scripture I like to dive into today it kind of sets the example for how we should rejoice and why we should rejoice if you have your Bibles please turn with me to Joel the second chapter we want to go to the 21st verse and we'll stop at the 27th I'll give you a second to turn to it if you have your Bibles or if you're on your Bible app um, it'll be on the screen in one second Joel the second chapter and the 21st verse fear not O land be glad and rejoice for the Lord has done marvelous things do not be afraid you beasts of the field for the open pastures are springing up and the tree bears its fruit the fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My great army, which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, 
and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Brothers and sisters, in researching this passage of scripture, it started to remind me of the things that we've been dealing with coming out of the pandemic. Um, the book of Joel, it begins by discussing the plague of locusts that attacked the kingdom of Judah. And it really put me in mind of COVID. Um, COVID came out of nowhere for us. We weren't prepared for it for the longest point in time. We had no idea how to handle it or to deal with it. Um, me, myself, I, I thank God I didn't come down with COVID, but we know plenty of people who did, and I had relatives that did. And I can admit that when I found out that they they had came down with COVID, I was scared. You know, I had a little bit of fear, but I'm thankful to know the God that I serve. You know, I wasn't given the spirit of fear and we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ and God has blessed and he kept and protected us. And I know that you watching the video here today that, you know, God has protected and kept you as well. So we know that anytime we face a storm, anytime we face a difficult situation, the key thing is to turn to God because God will see us through that situation. Um, now, many times throughout our journey, we hit bumps in the road, you know, and a lot of times those bumps can have a drastic and long lasting impact on our lives. And what this made me think about, you know, in, in looking at this passage of scripture, it reminded me kind of, of a flight. And if anyone has taken a trip on an airplane, you know that the flight attendants have a pre-flight speech. They basically give you instructions for, you know, how you should handle things on a flight so that everything goes smoothly as possible. Well, we know as Christians, we have our own set of instructions. Uh, we know that we have the basic instructions before leaving Earth. So what I like to do is kind of go through uh, our pre-fight checklist, if you will. So the first thing that they tell you to do on a flight is to stow or clear any baggage. Now, the reason for that is, is that if you have baggage all throughout the aisles, you can trip and you can fall. The crew can trip and fall. And in case of emergency situation, if you need to quickly maneuver, you know, an obstacle in your way leads to, it can lead to chaos. So you wanna make sure that the aisles are clear, that you've stowed any baggage. Well, it's pretty much the same thing in the spiritual sense as well. And if you don't mind, I like to take a look at Philippians, the third chapter and the 13th verse. It says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. And also we can take a look at 1 Corinthians the 13th chapter and 11th verse. It says, when I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Basically, we have to clear out anything that's preventing us from having the relationship that we need to have with God. We have to cut off those people. We have to cut up cut out those bad habits we have to basically remove anything that's holding us down or weighing us down that's distracting us from the relationship that we're supposed to have with god so you want to make sure that you stow or you clear out any baggage on your flight 
The second thing that they tell you to do is to fasten your seatbelt. And for this, I want to take a look at Romans, the 8th chapter, the 38th and 39th verses. It says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Brothers and sisters, when you fasten your seatbelt, you are locked in, okay? Nothing should be able to separate you from the love of God. Scratch that. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. God loves us in spite of all of our flaws, in spite of all of our wrongdoings. So you got to know that when you fasten your seatbelt, you're locked in um, for our young people. Um, there's a popular audio going around on social media from a song. I haven't listened to the song, not sure who made it, but it basically says, if we locked in, ain't no switching up. Well, that's the relationship that you want to have with God, okay? Uh, I know they're talking about things in the earthly sense in the song, but that's the relationship that you really want to have with God. You want to be locked in with God. And when you are locked in with God, ain't no switching up. There is no switching up. Nothing can separate you from the love of Jesus. Okay? So you have to know it's time to fasten your seatbelt. Don't waver. Don't falter. Lock yourself in because God is there for you. The next thing basically says to follow any crew member instructions. Now, the Bible is our set of instructions and if we went through all the instructions that were given you know it would take us days it would take us days and months to truly go through and to break down everything and we don't have time for for all of that today but uh we just want to give you some quick highlights of things that you should you know focus on and really meditate on um the first one is James, the fourth chapter and the eighth verse. It says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. We can't be double-minded. We cannot serve two masters. You will lean to one and hate the other. So you want to make sure that you are choosing the correct master. You want to make sure that you choose God. God has our back in spite of everything that we've done wrong. So I don't know about y'all, but I choose to follow God. Acts, the second chapter and the 38th verse. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent. Um, there's a common theme throughout the Bible and that is repentance. Sometimes you have to fall on your knees and you have to apologize to him and, and, and acknowledge the fact that you've done things wrong or you've done things your way and you know that God's way is best. So you have to go ahead and take that time and talk to God and truly repent and truly mean it. We have the saying that actions speak louder than words. We can say everything that we want but you have to be able to back it up. And that's one of the thing, key things here. Uh, you have to repent. Repenting, repenting is more than just saying something to God. It is backing it up with your actions. When you say, Lord, I need you, you have to mean it. You know, when you say, Lord, I love you, you have to mean it. So. You have to know, you know, it's time to repent. It's time to turn from those things that are keeping you from the true relationship with God. Um, and we can go to 1 Peter 2 and 9 to kind of cement that. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
my brothers and sisters, we mean something to God. Okay, we are his special people. I believe in the King James, it says a peculiar people. We are his people. God loves us, okay? He has called us to do great things. We have been blessed with many different gifts and talents and everything, all to give God the glory and the praise and the honor. So you have to, you have to repent and mean it. You have to say, Lord, I love you. I know I've been wrong, you know, but I won't do it again. And you have to follow through on it. Um, then the final part in this section uh, I want to touch on is in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and really verses 1 through 13. But for time purposes, we're going to jump around a little bit. Verse 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. And then we skip down to verse 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Now, uh, I want to touch on the whole armor of God in the next session, but just a quick, a quick thought, you know, the best protection you can put on is the whole armor of God. The best thing that you can do is to take God's word along with you wherever it is that you go. This is your sword and your shield. And it's one of the things that allows us to withstand any attack from the enemy. So I don't know about y'all, but I try to put on the whole on my God wherever it is that I go. Because you never know. You could walk, you know, walk out in the street and get hit by a bus any second. But God is protecting you and he is covering you and he is, you know, making sure that you make it to the destination that you're trying to get to. So you want to put on the whole armor of God. The next part and the final part is basically, you know, summarizing what to do in case of emergency, knowing what to do in the case of an emergency. So the first thing, uh, you have to be aware of the emergency exits. Well, that reminded me of the 121st Psalm. You know, you look to the hills. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Look, uh, when you are in a situation and you don't know how to get out of it, <laughs> the best thing you can do is look to the hills. Look, look to God. Talk to God. Ask him to lead and guide you, okay? Because before we ever enter a situation, God has already prepared the exit. So look to the hills from which come and get help, okay? Uh, number two, secure your mask before helping others. Now, you always want to help others. You know, we always want to help each other out. We are commanded to love our neighbor as ourselves. So we want to make sure that we're looking out for each other. But... You can't look out for somebody else if you're jacked up yourself. So you want to make sure that you secure your mask before helping others. And the example of this is Romans 10 and 9. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Save yourself, my brothers and sisters. You can help everybody else, but make sure that you save yourself. Um, number three. Put on your life vest. 
And this is where we get back to the whole armor of God. Um, in Ephesians, the sixth chapter and the 13th through the 18th verses, it breaks down the whole armor of God. Verse 13 says, Therefore, put on the whole armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Put on the whole armor of God. Make sure that you're praying. Make sure that you talk to God. Make sure that you spend that time and, and just let God know that he's the most important thing in your life. Um, I can't stress that enough. I've been working on that myself. And trust me, it has made a difference. Um, and then lastly, we want to say that the seat can be used as a flotation device. Now, on a plane, this scenario is basically when the plane is going down, it has landed, it has to do an emergency landing in the water, and they want you to use the seat as a flotation device so you won't drown. Well, that made me think of the set of scriptures that we stand on as Christians. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but through that the world through him might be saved John three sixteen and 17 my brothers and sisters there is no greater love than the love that God has for us that than the love that God has shown us he gave Jesus for us Jesus died for us on the cross. I can't even imagine a greater love than that. Like the love that a parent has for a kid, the love that a kid has for their parent cannot compare to that. It can't. The love that a person has for their spouse, it can't compare to that. Those are great examples of love, but Nothing can compare to the love of God for each and every one of us. And that is why we need to rejoice. We are living in the last days and it's something to rejoice about. So I hope that this message got to who it needed to get to and that you all like me are prepared for takeoff. So um, thank you again for listening and Again, let's bow with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for the word that went forth today. And I hope that it reached the soul that it needed to reach, Father. I pray that some lost person sees this message and they are willing to turn from their wicked ways and to draw closer to you, Father. I pray that you touch the bow down head right now, Father. Touch the sick and the shut in, Father God. Comfort them and let them know that you are God, Father God. I ask that you touch them from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet, Father, because you made them and you know all about them. I ask that you draw them close to you, Father, just as you have drawn us close to you. And I thank you, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you for attending the Bible study and be blessed. This is your latest from FBC. Come hear what the Holy Spirit is saying through the vessels at First Baptist Church. Sundays at 9 a.m., we are in our live services. Every Wednesday at noon, get a word to inspire, educate, and help you grow during our midweek Bible class. And at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays, 
Join us for our enrichment class, aka Sunday School, via teleconference, where we will take time to break down the key aspects of the Word of God so you can understand this great life we live as Christians. And you can stream our services and Bible class via our social platform. So invite a friend, a loved one, and get inspired, educated, and elevated in the Word of God and worship at FBC. We are asking all members to assist by making a commitment to donate weekly, bi-weekly, or even monthly. All donations will go into our debt-free fund to liquidate our mortgage. If you have further questions, you may speak with any member of our finance ministry or our debt-free ministry. The Food Pantry is open on Fridays from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. for drive through pickup. We are currently looking for extra hands to assist with lifting boxes. Please contact the ministry leaders if you are available. Thanks to all who assist weekly, and God bless. For all of these announcements and more, you can log on to our website to keep up with ministry, outreach, and other community information. We encourage not just for you, but for you to have your family and friends go to our social media platforms. Hit those like and subscribe buttons so you can get notified every time we are live. If you would like to be a blessing to First Baptist Church, it's easy via our giving platform. We encourage you to email or call us with your praise reports because we know God is still manifesting his promises, even in a pandemic. God bless. And this is your latest from FBC.